after our lovely time in Scotland, we made it to London and actually got to see a few things. Our first stop was Victoria and Albert. Um, and I think this is a really, really interesting museum in many ways. It is focused on design, mm, swords. And I think the biggest thing about this is just to take your time, to find the things that you are intrigued by, walk through the galleries as you can. Um, there's just a lot to see and a lot to take in. Your favorite things will probably be here buildings, little parts of buildings are here because it's so expansive. And there's so much to say about this place, but I will start with the fact that there is arts and crafts things here. There are William Morris and aesthetic things. And this made me so happy and so excited because I hadn't done my, my senior collection yet, which is based on all of this and seeing these pieces in person, seeing the detail work up close was just like, really inspirational to me. I don't think the arts and crafts movement or any part of it um, is without flaw, but uh, this is a thing that's really inspired me lately in terms of my work. And I hope to talk deeply about it one day in terms of a lot of the inspiration being taken from other <laughs> cultures um, for specific prints and everything. That's, that's its own video, but there are a bunch of things about the arts and crafts movement there, and it was just really cool to see it in person and see like all the skill and handwork that was done for that. But along with that, there were just galleries and galleries of things to see, including um, this carved piece that is not fabric. It is a carved piece to mimic it. And then there's this little area where you can actually touch fabrics and compare fabrics, and they had... Um, this really cool cotton, glazed cotton, so that you could see with these dresses um, the fabrics that have been used at the time. There were also these, these amazing replica pieces. I can't explain to you how much stuff there is here. This was in the jewelry area. Look at this coral stuff. Isn't it stunning? They also had a theatrical costume exhibit, um, and you know how much I love costumes. Like, we all are aware of this. They had Moulin Rouge, they had Wicked, they just had so much here. I didn't take photos of everything, and like obviously my camera was not doing great in museum lighting, but oh my goodness, it was so cool to see all this in person up close, and I just, I don't know, I could spend, I could have spent days here, um, because this is so focused in design, and that's so much of the stuff that I'm studying, and it's, there's just a lot. And there's so much detail work, obviously, um, in so much of this and being able to see that up close versus just on like a museum site and collection site. It was just a lot. Um, we tried to get as much as we could in. Uh, we definitely missed some things, but you know, they have, uh, they have really cool amount of textile stuff. Um, if you're a textile design fan, that's like your sweet spot. I love the lace work. I was particularly fond of this beautiful embroidery and I am determined to make myself a historical strawberry dress in this pattern. Um, there's also tons of sword stuff and armor and that was great for me and my husband because we do a lot of um, sword stuff and he loves that thing, that kind of stuff. Um, we have many, many swords and this was just like really cool to see this alongside the portraiture, alongside the design and clothing and everything. And like different parts of uh, the galleries go into different eras and like are, are laid out essentially differently. Uh, there is a kind of just fashion through the ages, vague, you know, what does that mean for um, Britain at the bottom? Um, and I was kind of bummed because, you know, this was focused on the fabric of fashion. They show like the fabrics off and stuff, but there's no real discussion of the harm done through some of these fabrics, through, you know, we know that cotton is one of the biggest contributors to enslaved peoples and the harm that was done and like that major boom of people making money. There's no discussion of this here. Um, that was like one of the crops that was really responsible for so much harm and was so popular with fashion, but where's the discussion? I just felt like as much as we can admire the opulence and the details, I just was super bummed that like this thing that's really focused on like, look at, like we're talking about 
all these art movements and the differences and changes between them. It's like, well, the fabrics are also part of the changes in these stylistic choices. Even the prints, like where did the prints come from? Where were they inspired by? What were these paisley things taken from? There's no real discussion about that. So though this museum is to me less just full-on colonizer glorifying as uh, the British Museum, which the British Museum do not go to. Like, it is not. Please just don't. That place is terrible. It is just a relic of times gone past in terms of it is glorifying everything bad about colonialism. They need to give back everything they've stolen from people. At least here, I feel like there's a difference in the curation. There is still glorifying of a colonizer community, right? A colonizing country. There is not discussion of a lot of context about things where certain designs were t- stolen from, um, where fabrics are coming from. But I do think that there is at least a centering of what is the purpose of this and what is the curation of this space versus the British Museum, which is just it's terrible. Um, there's no justification for what is going on there. Um, and I do see spaces where clearly the v is trying. Um, and as pretty as the dresses are, it seems like they are at least trying to give people slowly more context. It's, it has a lot of work to do, in my opinion. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. <sighs> but here we are. Um... I think that like if you are into design there's so much you can learn here and see in terms of um, fashion design clothing design like i was obviously so excited to see the lace work up close to see these examples of lace across so much time and so many kinds of lace um but it's not for everybody and i get that we hit up the wallace collection um there's like no labels here because they all have an online app and i had terrible reception and couldn't connect to the wi-fi so i couldn't get context for any of these things and that's a huge bummer to me i'm really bummed uh because like i hate going to museums and not getting context for things as clearly i stated just now <laughs> the thing that bothered me about my experience with the vna but Um, we tried to like parse from like a couple of small little things, information about the things we were seeing. Um, you can see so many paintings, so many paintings here. Um, including this gal, this Rococo gal. I'm sure we all know her, don't we? Um, it was just a lot to take in. That whole place was just like hoarder's paradise. Then we hit up the Sherlock Holmes Museum, 221 B. Baker. Now, this place used to not be ripped off. And I know because I have a photo in that chair with that hat on. But here we are. Um, this place is just, like, a tourist trap. And that's fine. Like, if you want just cheesiness, this is here. Um, in terms of accessibility, there's no elevator there. And in terms of accessibility for the v there's a ton of elevators. But you also have to really figure out how to navigate that place. Um, the Wallace place had one elevator, um, in the central part. So there's that. Um, but anyway, back to this thing. Uh, it exists. There's a lot of nods to the different mysteries and Sherlock Holmes things. It's fine. It's, I think it's always worth visiting once in your life because it's very silly. They also have wax figures. Um, if you're if you're a mystery or a Sherlock Holmes fan, and my favorite part is that they have little tiny hats, but they're too big for my rabbits. Here's the things I got for the VNA. I got um, reproduction fabric, of course. I got this hand and lock embroidery gold work kit, kit, and it's so good. And then I of course got Strawberry Thief merch because why not? Um, I started working on my little embroidery kit that I got while at the hotel, and then. On the second day of this exhibit, I hit up Crown de Couture at Kensington Palace. I, of course, got tea first because it was raining and I had nothing else to do. And the line to get in, like this place was sold out. Just FYI, this exhibit was sold out. And I happened to get a ticket for day two of this exhibit. Um, It was sold out, I guess, like the first weekend or something. Like it was booming. 
So the whole kind of thesis curation of this thing, look at these cute little illustrations, is like, look at how the Georgians and their opulence clearly reflect the opulence of today. Okay, so as we look at these pretty photos, because like, mm, yes, they are, they are cool and pretty. This also lacks an immense amount of context, an immense amount of talking about where the opulence and the money and the wealth comes from and the harm that comes through that. And that bugs me a lot because I do think that that could have been such an intriguing and strong curated exhibit to be like, yes, we can make these direct design parallels, these opulence parallels, but also let's talk about how we still have harm being done to laborers today, that we have major sweatshop problems, that we have environmental problems that from the top down in terms of the umbrella of what sustainability means, because it, it's not just about this is recyclable. There's so many ways to talk about that. There was no discussion here about that. It also felt very much centered on the Met Gala as, or and red carpets, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, here's like a little area of this that was the under things. And my favorite part, of this whole exhibit. My favorite thing, I think maybe of my whole trip that I saw was this, the calf enhancers, because in the Regency era, they thought calves needed to be big and sexy. So you could just stuff your calves to make them look big and sexy. And we need to bring that back. That's all I'm saying. They had one of Dita's corsets, um, which I thought was good to have. They also juxtapose all this with the um, illustrations um, of the time, which includes people being tight laced, by the way, because they made fun of tight lacing historically. So, you know, if you clutch all of your pearls, including the ones seen here, when you see tight lacing in historical dramas, well, just know that they also did it at the time. So here we are. Um, they had a lot of things just everywhere. I'm sure like it was mixed from their collections and tons of other museums, but like it really kind of is just like trying to make this connection between the Georgians and modern day opulence and like look at all the things look at how they get dressed and the the accessories and the under things and then like the red carpet stuff um like look at this and let's compare it to a regency uh entrance and like again while I can get that that's like apparently Queen Charlotte's by the way um I just feel like there was so much stronger parallels that could be made um, this hallway had, um, audio of, like, reporters on red carpet screaming, and it echoed terribly, and it was kind of just, like, off-putting, in my opinion, but okay. Um, and of course it's in Kensington Palace, so it's, like, very fancy. And maybe that's why it was such a, like, low-stakes <laughs> thesis, because it's palace propaganda. Um, do you see that little black thing? It's a bug. I watched this bug move up this skirt for many minutes, too many minutes, probably. Um, but there's a ton of details here and I'm trying to share as many as I can. They encouraged photos, but no video. So that's why you have a bunch of photos. And actually I have posted a ton of photos to my Patreon and, um, to my Instagram stories. Um, and I will put them all on, uh, Facebook and like be publicly available to everybody in a minute. Um, just, I've been busy. Everything's been a little chaotic since I got home. Oh, Lizzo, we love um, it was, I think one cool thing about this to me is, yes, getting to see, uh, the amazing construction of these historical garments, but also modern garments up close, because I think, again, in a world where most of our fashion is fast fashion and not constructed amazingly, getting to see up close, like, actual well-made modern garments is kind of great and amazing. But, like, this is apparently, like, a muslin gown, and I'm like, where's the discussion of muslin? Where is it about how cotton became a major crop that created so much harm and and no discussion of like money of those dresses coming from those crops and enslavement and, and slave trade and all that. There's just none, none, of, none of that. It's just frustrating to me. And even to think of like in a time where it's like even modern dresses that are inspired by historical things like modern red carpet dresses and things that are like taken from runways that now do what five six seasons that have 60 plus looks each that are 
just the runway show, but there's also the fast fashion part of that collection. I don't know. Um, I have a lot of questions about a lot of things that I just don't feel like were answered here. I think it was very much a look at the pretty clothes. This wall of like imagined texts about this era was very weird. Very bizarre. Um, anyway, the experience ends with a look at um, young Victoria's apartment there. Um, okay, it was fine. I really just flew through this and there's a little thing where Victoria first saw Albert. If you're into that, um, I was sitting during Easter, so, like, there was really, really good snacks everywhere, uh, and I got myself one, because it had been a day, and it was sunny, finally, and I enjoyed a little bit of tea and cake, because, whew, walking around, I realized that my hip is really messed up from this whole thing, I never went to physical therapy for it, that's just a TMI moment, anyway, next I went to Liberty, um, and I cried a little bit because I just couldn't believe that I was here. Um, so this is important to me, first of all, because like this building's fucking amazing. Second of all, because during the arts and crafts movement, they, uh, this is a place that sold, um, really cool arts and crafts clothing. Um, and they still have like the, this area that's called the haberdashery that you can get sewing supplies, like really nice sewing supplies, kits. And like, that's one of the things that they had during the time they had, arts and crafts like tapestry kits and embroidery kits because they were trying to encourage people to go back to making their own things and artistry and handwork this is all fabric i could never afford but it's so gorgeous next i went to mccullough's and wallace um it's a two-story little sewing place that's about two and a half blocks away i didn't get anything here i really wanted to but i was saving my money for something else i did get the museum book for what you call it and they have this amazing spread with bunnies um, also, if you are anywhere in the UK and there's an alchemy, alchemist bar nearby, they have really cool drinks. I had a really cool Vimto thing and Frank got this color changing potion situation. Uh, highly recommend. It's a fun experience and they have outdoor seating. Um, other things, uh, I continue to troll Frank through this whole trip by getting photos of him in front of the Night Frank signs, his secret life. Oh, and we were to my favorite part, which is my journey. Um, the Elizabeth line was down this weekend, so that I was there and doing this. And I was stressed. I was stressed about missing my connecting train to get to where I needed to go. And where I needed to go, mm, pastries, was Hampton Court. And I got there very early, and I saw this giant rabbit, because they really do Easter big in the UK. And I was so excited to be here. No one else is really here. Just a few people because it's before opening. And I kind of screamed a little. <laughs> because I got to go to a Royal School of Needlework class. So I will preface this with, I didn't really get to go to Hampton Court itself in terms of seeing it. I was in like a room doing this project all day, which was beautiful. I got to do silk ribbon work and surface work. Look at my beautiful basket of flowers. I had the best time and I get teary thinking about how amazing this was. And I had lunch out in the gardens. It was a beautiful Easter weekend. And I just, I can't believe I got to do this, you guys. This is life-changing. Okay, I guess enough screaming for me. It was just, like, really cool for me. Um, I obviously took a little stop at the uh, Royal School of Needlework uh, shop and uh, bought a lot of things, uh, made space in my carry-on for them. And I saw, like, the little rabbit kit that I got in Scotland. That made me so happy. Um, but there's so much here, you guys. There's so much stuff here. And... I wish I lived somewhere like here. I wish I lived here and close by so I could take these classes. Anyway, this is my way out. I didn't get to visit really Hampton Court at all. They had like an hour that I could have gotten admission and gone because um, going to the Royal School of Needlework is not the same as having admission to Hampton Court. Um, and I, I could have done a quick hour here, but I'm like, I was so tired from like, it was like a 10 to 4 class or something. And it was, I just wanted to 
take a hot shower. Um, but I did get some goodies and I can't wait to work on these kits. Um, they are really, really cool. I also snagged some beeswax from bees that, um, are actually nearby, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, this is like moving into our last day in London. We had a delicious meal at La Durée and Frank got this amazing croque monsieur, but like as whatever this is, I got tea and a teacup and then we put on our tweed and we went home. Thank you for following my journey, you guys. This has been chaos.